happy Sunday. Let's work on an accordion journal. I know that I had said the other day that we were going to work on the religious art journal, but I'm waiting on a vintage piece that I purchased off eBay, and it's not here yet. So I'm going to alter today's video a little bit, and we're going to do something different, and then we'll jump back on the religious art one when my piece gets here. Um, so I am also working on a couple of accordion journals. Um, I know that I showed you the one that I did before with the butterfly on the front. And so I am working on a couple of others. This one, I have everything in and all I need to do is fill it. And you can see they open like this. And then when you flip through, you can flip through the front and just keep on flipping and it flips through the back and it's got several pockets and tucks and you get to fill it up with all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, I've got this one done and this is all Tim Holtz scraps that I had. This is a great use of scraps, by the way. And then I'm going to put this one together, um, per some comments that you all would like to see how they go together. So I'm going to do this one, and this is just an old book cover that I'm going to use. And of course I'll cover that up. Um, I like it because it's kind of grungy and aged, and um, I am using a lot of the Tim Holtz abandoned paper, which is also grungy. So I thought it would go really well together. So what I have done so far, just to kind of speed it up a little bit, is I've already attached my papers together and folded them. And so what you're going to want is, depending on how many pages you want it to have, you're going to want um, an odd number. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five sheets here. Two, three, four, yeah, five sheets. And this was the smaller pad, um, not the 12 by 12s, but the smaller pad. And you can see that it's going to fit nicely in the cover once we do our tearing. And so I have gone ahead and glued all these together because when it's all spread out, Obviously, I can't keep it in frame and folded it up, but I'm going to show you those steps as well. And this, by the way, is by no means a tutorial. Um, this is just the way that I figured out how to do it. And um, But there are some good uh, uh, videos out there. 49 Dragonflies has one, and I think she watched, and I watched also um, Shabby Soul. Um, they have videos on these that are more of a tutorial type thing, or I will say probably better instructions than what I'm going to give. Um, okay, so I like this little frayed end, and so I'm going to turn my book cover upside down because obviously I'm going to cover this anyway because I want these little frayed ends to be on the outside, not on the inside. And so you're gonna have, you know, your two covers like this. And when you fold your papers, you want it to hang off the edges of the book, um, you know, just a little bit, depending on how much you like. You can see on this one, I did a smaller edge and on this one, I'm going to do just a little bit bigger edge because it worked out for the paper. And then I just went through on your front cover, the one that goes on your front cover, you're going to flip it. That's not my front. This is my front. Um, you're going to flip it toward the outside so that when you mount it, it mounts like the book opens. Does that make sense? 
And then you're simply going to glue all your pages together so that you have one long piece. And then you're going to fold them back and forth. Kind of like an accordion. Till you get to the back piece. And then the back piece again, which is going to be like this, your little flap is going to point you know, to the other way, to the outside of the back. Okay, so now that we have those steps done, what I want to do is I want to do, go and I want to tear off bottoms and tear off tops to make my edges jagged. And I want to leave about the same amount of room that I've left on my sides. So, um, actually, I think I'm going to leave my bottoms, what do I want to do? I want to make sure that when I glue my pockets on, my pockets are hanging over the edge. So what I may do, I may cut my bottoms even and tear my tops. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to tear across these tops and I'm probably going to get out of frame a little bit, but I don't know exactly how to manage this without... And I'm not, I'm doing this very randomly and very jaggedly just kind of tearing. And again, if you don't like this look, I'm sure that it would be just fine, you know, to leave them straight. I don't see why you couldn't. Okay, so there's that. And I'll, of course, save this because it's great little bits to use wherever. All right, so there's our tops. We'll see how that looks in our book here. Okay, and then I'm also going to tear across the bottoms, but I'm not going to worry so much about those being um, jagged because they're going to be jagged when we do our pockets. But I am doing them with the tear with. And if I get off screen a little bit, I do apologize. But like I said, it, with it being so stretched out, it's kind of hard to... get everything in camera. Sorry if I sound a little stuffy today. I woke up with my nose all stuffy. Our weather's been so freaky weird. But it's got my sinus is just all confused. We've been having some of those 20, 30 degree time changes or temperature changes during the day. Where you wake up and it's 20 and then in the afternoon it's 60. It's kind of hard to get your sinuses to behave. Okay, and again, I'll save these long strips. All right. So that's where we're going to start. And now we 
we can mount these into our book. Make sure I got it short enough. Yep, I think that will work. And so you don't want this flat piece to be longer, longer than your book cover. All right, so I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac for this just so I know it's good and strong. And that's my back. I'm glad I checked that. The one thing to be sure and check is that you got your paper upside right and your covers on the right side that you want them. I'm gonna make myself a little mark here so I know where to put the glue. Is everybody ready for the Super Bowl tonight? So, are you more excited about the game or the commercials or the halftime show or we're going to be a Bengals fan tonight. I think I've told you guys before Higgins that is plays with the Bengals as a local guy. So we're gonna cheer for him. We don't have a real team in this race. So. He's going to get our attention tonight. We're going to make some wings. We bought them early, though. My gosh, they were talking about having a shortage on chicken wings, so we bought them early and put them, put them in the freezer. You can't have a Super Bowl without chicken wings. That would just be wrong. I'm going to tear this off a little bit because it was longer than the book cover. my gap and you can see some of my folds aren't exact the main thing that you want to make sure of is that your um, your pages are are not cockeyed and that your um, cover, it's sticking out of your cover on both sides. Couldn't spit that out, could I? Because it allows it enough room to open and close and flip the correct way. Oops, don't slide on me now. Okay, I think that's somewhat straight. Maybe not perfectly straight, but we'll live with that. Just supposed to be grungy after all. My front and my back are lining up. So I'm good with that. Okay, so there's our book. So the next thing that you would want to do after you get your book constructed is to figure out what you're going to do for pockets. 
on the inside. And that's upside down. See, that's going to confuse me until I cover that. <laughs> um, and what I did, and see, I may have to go back and get some little bad spots now that I've folded. Uh, that's another thing is make sure wherever you're folding is not on your glue line because it will cause it to pop. I thought that one was far enough away, but maybe not. So that's what we have. And you can see it will keep on going like that. So, I do want to cover the inside of this, or at least do something here. Um, to cover that. And so I have some little drop pieces over here. And I also have some of the little pieces that are in the back of the big 12 by 12 pads that I'm going to use for pockets. Just some pieces I thought would go. I've got this piece. It's probably not enough contrast. And I know a lot of these are, in my opinion, very loud. And I think I'm going to calm, calm them down with some gesso or maybe cover them with some some other kind of paper or something because they are quite loud. And for me, even for me, I love the colors, but they're just very bright. Okay, I think this one. what I want to do here, folks. Okay, I think I'm going to go with this one. What do I got on the back? Yeah, because that's probably going to take something like that. Even though that doesn't quite fit it exactly by the time I put a pocket down here I think it'll be fine okay all right so let's do this one here You can see I'm not even worried too much about how I mark this one with pencil because there's so much going on on this page. Can't hardly see where I'm going to mark them with pencil anyway. And I'm just going to use my tear ruler on this. I normally wait until I get the whole um, book done. Not done, but all of my pages and pockets in before I ink. But you're 
you can obviously do it as you go. Like I said, this is great for using up scraps because you don't have to, nothing has to be exact. And nothing has to be one piece. You know, it can be however you want it. Oops. Well, that's what happens when you try to apply glue on top of your book. You can't stay on the can't stay on the track. There's that. Now, let's go ahead and put a pocket or something here. Just so I won't have to look at that down there. Again, I'm going to pretty much tear everything in here. Now, I will ink my pockets as I go. Um, just simply because it's too hard to ink them once you get them glued in. And I'm being really rough with this paper because I want it to look old and wrinkled and weathered and all that. did have some cracking on this paper, which is really unusual for Tim Holtz paper. So I'm going to um, any place that I feel like that those folds have been compromised, I'm just going to run some washi tape down them. All right, and then in the front... My little scraps out of the way. I think I'm going to do something a little calmer. I don't really want to. do something like this, not the not the letters. I can use this piece. I 
I may do a double pocket. Let's do that. And just to kind of take some of that. busyness away. Alright, so there's the first one. I'm going to tear it. Kind of fold it like that. And then for the Second one. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, she just said she wants to get rid of the busyness, and now she's putting that back on there. But it'll be all right. Mail this week, Annette. Hi, Annette. Sent me a huge box of buttons that she had been collecting for 45 years, I believe she said. And she had decided to part with them and was going to just take them to the Goodwill and thought of me. And she has gifted me her buttons, and they are awesome. I can't wait till I have time to sit down and go through and look at all of them. There are some amazing buttons just looking in, in the bag, you know, through the bag. So I cannot wait to go through those and see what all's in there. So, Annette... You are awesome, and I appreciate it so much. And I promise that I will make beautiful things with your buttons. And my grandmother uh, collected buttons as well, so that's something that we have in common. And uh, she said that her grandmother used to let her play with her buttons when she would visit, and my grandmother would too, so that was brought back great mem memories for her to say that. And uh, I know that some of the things that I love today were because of my grandmother. Um, she was a avid quilter. I think I've told you guys that before, and so I love quilts. Um, she always wore an apron, and so I love vintage aprons. I have a display of them in my home. Um, she canned and had blue mason jars everywhere. Um, she had one room that we stayed in. It was actually a bedroom, but that's where she had a wall shelf in there that was shells that was floor to ceiling where she stored her canned green beans or you know whatever she had canned and put up and I remember you know being being little and being in that room and seeing all this just rows and rows and rows of mason jars filled with her different canned items so I love blue mason jars to this day so it's funny what we grow to love, and it's usually 
you know, influenced by someone in our lives. So, yes, I'm very excited to go through these buttons and see what all's in there and see if I can remember, you know, any of my grandmother's buttons being the same ones that are in this collection. I have my grandmother's salt and pepper shaker collection. She collected salt and pepper shakers. All her kids and all would bring them to her from their trips. And uh, when she passed, my mother gave them to me because I would always take them out and admire them when we were at my grandmother's house. Pretty, pretty special stuff. All right, so with this one, what we have is we have a pocket here and a pocket here um, so that we, when we start stuffing, we can put our things in there. And uh, so what we will continue to do is just flip through these pages one by one and create you know, what kind of, whatever kind of tuck or pocket that we want. Um, but what I wanted to show you is when you create your pockets, you want them to hang down um, a little bit so that you have some hanging down pieces coming out the bottom. And I'll show you on this one. See how we have these little crumply up pieces? And you don't have to do this. I'm just telling you how I did it to, to get the look. So when I tore my pockets to, to put them in, I left, you know, I just tore out scraps. And then when I glued them down, I glued them down to hang over the edge of the page and to hang lower than what the book is. So what what that creates is it creates hanging downs here and you got your pieces sticking out here and you got your pieces sticking out here. And then when we go to fill it, you know, you can add some pieces to the, sticking out the top as well if you want tabs or whatever. And that way you've got that true because what will happen is when you start putting stuff in, it will start getting thicker. And you'll have that true look of having, you know, like a really stuffed looking little journal. And I think that just turns out really cute. If that makes sense. Okay. Alright. So, we've got our pocket here. And you can see how that gray turns that down a little bit. It's still really, really vibrant. And, you know, I wonder if... I don't think I have a piece close by. But I'm thinking about putting a piece of pattern paper over that. Just to calm that down. And I may do that. Okay, so next... We have this one, and this one is not as vibrant as the others. And so, what I'm going to do, and you can do side tucks, you can do, um, you know, whatever you want. On this particular one, I think I'm going to do a side tuck right here because I don't like this straight seam. And I think I'm going to do um, something here again because I, no, this one's, that one's not straight. This one is straighter than I want it to be. And I'm going to use this funky side of the tarot ruler. Is this going to be tall enough? Yeah. So on this edge, I'm going to use the regular. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the regular here. Oh, I about didn't do the regular. I about did the big one. I'm going to do the regular here. And I'm going to 
about to make that too short. Okay, so I'm gonna do it this way, I think. And I'm gonna do this funky one like this. And that's what you get. And I'm gonna hang it down. Okay, and then we got this piece that we can use somewhere else. So again, I'm gonna be really rough on my edges. I don't care if it tears. I don't care if it rolls up. Actually, I would prefer it to roll up at the bottom. I'm gonna catch this bottom piece as I go. I love doing this kind of journal because there are no, is, um, you know, there's really no wrong way to do it. And there's not a lot of measuring. It's more, you know, just I'm wiping this off because I put it all the way on the bottom edge and that's not where I want it because I want it to hang over. I'm going to put my glue here. See, I got to Gavin and about made a mistake. Okay, and then I'm just gonna really just destroy that edge, kinda. All right, so we have that one there. And then on this side, I'm going to do, I'm going to have to use this longer piece. And do a side tuck. Obviously, I didn't bring enough paper over here, but this gray goes well. And I'm going to just tear it with the regular. regular side this time and I don't care if I don't want it to hang over on a, on a side tie. Scrappy bits. Now, these are not the only pockets that I will put in here, but it's a start. Um, these little journals are great for um, all I'm doing is crinkling up the paper so it doesn't look new. These little journals are great for making little creative tuck spots and little teeny tags and things like that. And we'll get into that further when we start embellishing everything. But um, they really are great for just because you can actually use uh, ephem ephemera that is dimensional 
because you're not being so-called dictated by how thick your spine is or whatever because you know as long as you stay even it's just going to keep on rising up and rising up and so it's a really good opportunity to use a lot of um, ephemera that you maybe couldn't use in another journal um, you know like Tim Holtz flare pieces or some of his baseboard pieces from his junk drawer collection, um, you know, buttons and charms and, you know, things that are thicker that you can't always use in a, in a regular journal. So if you like those kind of things, which I love, um, then this is a great journal to, to do to be able to use that kind of stuff because the you know you're not limited by you know a, a one inch spine or a two inch spine or whatever um you can do whatever you want all right so we got I think I'm going to do something like a tag pocket here. Do I have a tag close by? That I can use. Like I won't put it in right now, but like if I funk this one up a little bit with some coffee dye or whatever, you know, you could put your tag in here as a tuck and then put it in there. So I think this is a good use for things like that. You can make little bitty pockets, you know, that you can stick tickets down in or, you know, um, whatever so um like i said the sky's the limit for what you can do all right i think i'm gonna put this here to begin with And the good thing about using, the one thing that you have to pay attention to if you're going to pick papers that aren't double-sided is, um, you know, what's on the back side. Because where it hangs down at the bottom, you're going to see that. And so if you have something that's white um, on the back side, you need to be cautious of that because it will show. You know, nothing that a little bit of ink won't fix, but I just wanted to point that out. But it will will be showing. Okay, so this time I'm going to remember that I'm going across the bottom of the page, and then I'm going up the side of the paper. That way when I do my overhang, it will be glued correctly. If you line it up with the side of the page. I don't know what I was looking at there. Luckily it hadn't stuck yet. Okay, and then there's another one of the pages. That one is kind of close to the edge. The fold is close to the edge, and I think that's why I got that little bit of cracking. But then again, like I said, any of those that are like that, I will just use some washi tape or a little strip of paper or something and 
wrap it around there and fix it. Okay, so now we have this big double spread here and might do I'm not sure what we're gonna do there. We may skip that one for a minute. I don't wanna keep on doing. I do like that though. I think I'll just do a little tuck. This little piece. For now and then we'll add something something else when we get going good so I hope you guys are getting the idea I won't keep you forever just gluing pockets into this but you can kind of see where we're going with it That'll be a little tuck like that. That'll work well. And then you just continue on and, uh, you know, flip it to the other side. And then you're going to do the same thing over here. And so when you get done, you will have, you know, all your pockets in there. And you can start filling it. And then I'll show you on the other one. Here. So now that we have all of our pockets, we can start putting, you know, if you want to put tags in, you can do that. If you wanted to add, let's say we wanted to take a little, another little piece here and make just a little pocket. We'll do that real quick. Just do something like this and we glue that there then you could take you know a little let's see what I have say this was a ticket and you could put you know the ticket down in there you'd have your ticket there your tag you do whatever you want to do you know, I've got this little sticker here with mushroom on it. That'd be kind of cute. So you just want to, you know, embellish it like crazy. And then, let's see if I've got something thick so I can show you. Okay, here's one. Here's a bingo thing, which is very thick. But in this journal... You know, it's not going to make a difference because you could put as many thick things in there as you want. And as long as you keep them balanced and you're not getting them all on one side so that, you know, you're doing this or all back here, so you're doing this. Keep them balanced so that you raise evenly. You can use as much of that kind of stuff as you want and it's still going to be a really cool journal and it's going to hold all that stuff without any difficulties. So, that's just a few ideas for you. And, uh, I hope that you guys will make one of these with me. Lots of fun. And hopefully by the time, um, you know, I'm ready for the next journal video, my piece from eBay will be here and we can jump back on the religious art journal 
which I'm really excited about doing the two tags that uh, we did the other day. I just, every time I look at them, I just am in awe of the beauty of the printables that I'm going to use. And I have a whole basket full of them, so I can't wait. Can't wait to use those. So, I hope everybody continues to have a great Sunday. And I hope whatever team you root for, whether it be the, the football teams, the commercials, or the halftime show, I hope it all goes well for you. And until Tuesday, when we will be back to I Saw It on Pinterest, um, stay safe and stay healthy. And we'll see you next time. Bye.